What's the most important nutrient that you can possibly have? Of all the three macronutrients, what is the most important? That's the question I'm going to answer in this video. Welcome, everybody. This is Ryan over at High Carb Generator. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I wanted to talk about a cellular level. Cellular level. I wanted to talk immune system. I want to talk a couple other things. I'm not going to do a lot of this on this format. I'm actually going to hop in, hop in to the computer and I'm going to show you a couple of things. I got some studies. I got some videos. I got a, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so I wanted to show you that, you that it's going to be a little bit longer video than I thought it was going to be, but I've got a lot of good information here. I've already done the computer part. Uh, and I think we're just going to hop into it. I just wanted to show you, you know, the mitochondria obviously is the, the powerhouse of the cell. The, most cells can't run off of, um, without it really especially your your skel uh muscles muscular skeletal and your uh, smooth muscle basically whatever runs you has mitochondria in it now when it's exposed to like cold therapy the reason um the cold thing works so well with wim hof i've i've done videos about that but they got mad about it that i had to pull them um but the reason that works so well is when you're cells, when your mitochondria have to work even harder, they start to multiply. And the more they multiply, the more they need to, to consume. And the more consumption they do, the more weight you lo loss you have. It, you know, there, there, there's a ton of them in, in uh, skeletal muscle. So that's why when you have more muscle on you, when you have more, you know, lean muscle, basically, or lean mass, the more, more of that needs calories to actually survive so anyway the more mitochondria you have the better off so the more muscle you build now i'm not talking i'm not going to get into the muscle too much but the more muscle you have i'm just going to leave it at that the more mitochondria you have and the more mitochondria you have the more calories you burn and the more calories you burn just you know basal metabolic rate you know basically just sitting there on a couch the more weight you're going to lose. So anyway, let's hop into the video. Here we are in the computer. So the mitochondria are found. This is the first thing I wanted to talk about is mitochondria. Mitochondria is basically what runs your entire body. Mitochondria are found in the cells of nearly every organism. I don't know. Eurocratic or whatever. I don't know. Including plants and animals. Cells that require a lot of energy, such as muscle cells, can uh, contain hundreds of thousands of mitochondria. A few types of cells, such as red blood cells, uh, lack in uh, mitochondria entirely. Um, but what do they live on? So what runs your body? What runs everything, you know, the, all the hard, hard processes? And just think, you know, muscle just isn't, you know, what you see, you know, when you flex or something like that. They're smooth muscle and, and they're skeletal muscle. And so they both have mitochondria in it. So they run on fatty acids and carbohydrates. So if you want to run the body, you need carbohydrates mostly because it's not going to pull fat, fatty acids first. It's going to pull carbohydrates first. So six types of carbs, your immune system. So then the other part of this is your immune system. Your immune system runs off carbohydrates. So the people who are getting sick constantly from the keto life um, are doing so for a reason. And even on keto, you can't stay away from carbs because your body's turning the protein and the fats into carbs. So <clears throat> they say they may be controversial in the diet world, but carbs play several pretty vital roles supporting the optimal function of our immune system. They come from the plant-based foods and are several uh, micronutrients, uh, vitamins, and, and minerals that are in it as well. Carbs during a workout help immune system recovery. So there's also that part of part of it. So among various nutritional strategies to counteract immune depression during exercise recovery, carbohydrates have proven the most effective. Not protein, not fat, carbohydrates. Ingesting carbohydrates during vigorous exercise may help, because they gotta say may may. I love these studies, right? I know I'm using studies here, but everything's may, might, kind of, I mean, how illegitimate. It's kind of like the weatherman. But anyway, we're using this like it might snow today. It's July, but it could. You know, it's just, 
I guess July in the, the Southern Hemisphere, I guess it could maybe. I don't know. But and during vigorous exercise may help, may, uh, because carbohydrates contain uh, maintain blood sugar levels. Now, the one thing that I will say, I might link these uh, articles, I might not, um, is when I used to lift a lot and I was on my protein, protein, protein days, um, I was getting sick all the time, all the time. Influence of carbohydrates on the immune uh, response to uh, intensive prolonged exercise. It really doesn't matter. I mean, anything could be exercise. I mean, it, 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 it was snowing like crazy this past two days. You're out there shoveling this stuff, snow blowing, whatever, trying to walk around in it. I mean, it, this is why people probably get, uh, go down pretty easily at, during the winter because they're constantly outside, uh, o- overexerting themselves comparatively to the other less crazy times of the year. So whether these immune changes compromise host protection against viruses is still undetermined. Various attempts have been made to, to alter the changes in immunity following heavy exertion through a nutritional or chemical means. With the most impressive results reported thus far in the carbohydrate supplementation studies. So the most impressive macronutrient or chemical in the immune response was carbohydrates. Carbs better than antioxidants to boost immune and recovery after exercise. It really doesn't even matter. You're, they're trying so desperately to make it look like carbs aren't needed all day. They're so, I mean, if, when you type this stuff into the Google or whatever search engine you're using, it is amazing how hard they try to make it look like carbs are bad. Even in an article when they say that carbs are the most needed macronutrient for immunity and for the mitochondria. (laughs) It's crazy to me to watch all of this. So low-carb eating and your immunity. Why you need some carbohydrates? See, the, the, the wording here, you know, you really don't need carbohydrates, but your immune system won't work without it. You know, but you might not need it. I don't know. Maybe might. Carbohydrates are your unit of immediate food energy. They control blood sugar levels. (laughs) So then this is on low carb eating, right? They say that carbs control your blood sugar levels, but then they tell you not to eat carbs because your blood sugar levels are going to get too high. (laughs) Uh, and people listen and believe this stuff. Oh, it's so amazing. And keep them stable, okay? Uh, cutting out bread, pasta, and potatoes is often viewed as low-carb for general public. But if you're still eating dairy, fruit, and starchy veggies, this isn't low-carb at all. However, your carbohydrate hydrate intake may be better controlled and therefore better for your overall health. I don't. I, what does that mean? Is However, the biggest confusion comes in the no-carb message that comes with some of the diets. A no-carb diet is best for the physiology of our bodies, is it? Because it only runs off them. Nathan Pritikin, let's, he was, I think he's talking about fat in here. Four to five hours after the glass of heavy cream, he registered 14 angina attacks. And yet there were... 14 angina attacks after having fat. They're just comfortable in his office, doing nothing special, just letting the fat get into the blood, make the cells sticking together, block the small vessels, and creating coronary insufficiency. The electrocardiographic results also demonstrated coronary insufficiency, whereas in the beginning, there wasn't any. So his heart was doing fine, and then he ate a lot of fat. Dr. Crow wanted to see if it was the amount of fluid that these people had or what it was. So a short time later, he gave the same patients a drink that had no fat at all, but the same amount of fluid and the same amount of calories. Four to five hours after the test, there wasn't a single angina attack, not a single abnormality in the electrocardiogram. Amazing. He had carbohydrates and he didn't have any angina attacks. Imagine that. Very confusing. We've established through the years that fat is an enemy if you have a circulatory problem. Other invest- so you can't have fat, high fat, if you have a heart, basically. If you don't. Sugar causes a. Be- 
All right, let's watch this. This one's kind of funny. This is DR. Okay, check this out. This is Veg Source uploaded. Jeff Nelson uploaded this one. Skewer type two diabetes of sugar, white rice. McDougal gets on point. McDougal gets on point with the sugar. Look at his face. He means business. <laughs> he looks like he doesn't even want to be there. He's like, what kind of stupid question are you going to ask me next? Oh, and then keto diet on the, on the right here. Let's listen to this. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to play the video. I'm going to share my comments and criticisms afterwards. Listen up. Diabetes, I've learned in this conference, is caused by fat clogging the receptors and not so much by sugar. Does the glycemic index have any meaning? I don't put a lot of stock in it at this point. If you eat a whole food, uh, a <laughs> just quickly look how nervous Clapper is. He, he he sees he feels. Look at McDougal's body language. He's like he's tilting his his head's tilting away from Clapper. He's like I don't know this fucking Clapper clown. And look at Clapper's body language. He's sort of like arching up here. He's defending. He can feel McDougal disapproval. His hands going up. He's getting ready for the the bitch slap. He's like, oh my god, I'm I'm siding with Dr. Gregor. I'm just gonna get bitch slapped by McDougal. And McDougal's just like down, looking down. His body language is like disappointed. This if this guy was my son, I would have banned him right now. And you can sort of see that, feel that here. You look at the body language. Just as a classic frame. Anyway, let's listen to it. A whole food plant-based diet uh, nothing's going to shoot your in your your blood sugar up it's the refined uh, carbohydrates that get us in trouble and uh, if you hold your fruit that just doesn't even make sense moderate like dr mcdougall said uh the whole group they need a better definition for refined carbohydrates if refined carbohydrates is donuts cookies and pot pastries then i agree Brains have such a, an easy uh, glycemic curve to them that you're not going to get in trouble, and I never really pay attention to it. And the, the glycemic index also is for individual foods, and nobody really eats individual foods. You eat a whole meal, and it's a matter of what that whole glycemic load is. So the whole concept is pretty minimal. Eat whole uh, plant-based food. McDougal can't wait. He's going, oh, my God, this dude, this clown. What the fuck's this clown doing up here? What's he doing up here? <laughs> you got the old mate on the end going okay what's the Badoogle going to say and this guy here is that lot who's that it's a uh, gold hammer or someone looking at Badoogle going all right let's, let's start the so gold hammer is the one who runs the uh the water fasting place uh true north and they actually use mcdougall's start solution when people are coming off of a water fast they don't use keto keto over here keto diet party let's start the party the body language the hands are up he's still thinking you know but do going to slap me let's listen up foods and enjoy lots of fresh fruits and veggies and uh, and you ought to do fine i wouldn't worry about it yeah. this is this is one of the most important thing for uh the consumer and scientists and medical doctors to get straightened out and it should have been straightened out in the 1920s when a fellow by the name of percival Hemsworth published his basic research, and it was all published by 1940 in the British Medical Journal, and it's just no question about it. Fat, we're talking about pig fat, cow fat, olive fat, paralyzes insulin, increases insulin needs, carbohydrate, including pure white sugar, increases the sensitivity to insulin. It was published by Brunzel from the University of Washington in the New England Journal of Medicine in... I think 78, Brunzel's his name. He took uh, type two diabetics, he made a synthetic diet, 45% <clears throat> sugar, and then double white sugar, multi- White sugar. Dextrose. Not coconut sugar, not date sugar. What are the other ones? Not molasses. I mean, I mean, I, everybody's well-meaning, but every, I, you just you tell people they can have sugar, and they're like, well, what kind? What kind? What kind can I have? Plain table sugar. Doubled it to 85. Coconut sugar? Can I have coconut sugar? Just have sugar. Sugar. Coconut sugar tastes terrible, too. I don't know why people eat that stuff. 5% white sugar. It's garbage. Every aspect of the diabetes improved. Walter Kempner, back in the 40s and 50s, published his results on treating type 2 diabetics with rice, table sugar, fruit, and juice. And Kempner knew back in the 50s that sugar makes insulin work better and cures diabetics. But you see, we've got it entirely backwards these days. They 
Backwards makes money. Thinking sugar causes diabetes. You know, it's just, it's so backward and bizarre. Nobody stands a chance. So we got to get this one simple fact down. Anyway, let's keep moving. Bill Clinic tells us that he's seen 20 year olds. 20. That have been on these high protein diets, a steak for protein, 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 breakfast and so on, already with kidney damage. I'm one of them. What, what age was I when I did that? I mean, I'm sure I was 25 and, and it hit, but I really didn't know it hit until 28. Athletes, 20-year-old athletes, sort of a tragedy. That the I mean, I wasn't an endurance athlete, but there's not too many people who could outlift me. High-protein diet has been so misunderstood as to damage. Interestingly enough, isometric, uh, w w you know, lifting, basically, um, is shown to age you faster. Which kidneys already at 20 years old with our athletes. Now, a high protein diet has nothing to say good for it. And yet, think of all the weight reduction diets. These are high protein diets. The Atkins diet, the Stillman diet, the Scarsdale diet. And a good reason for these diets uh, is that they do lose weight. And how do they lose weight? Well, they do it very simply. The high protein diet is only about 75% efficient as far as becoming going into calories. Almost one fourth of the protein goes into waste products. We call these ammonia products. It's the same ammonia. You're gonna smell like ammonia if you eat too much, like I did. Smelled like cleaner. Ammonia as you have in smelling salts. If you've ever smelled ammonium smelling salts, you know that it's a pretty, uh, pretty strong material. Well, I can tell you that the ammonia is poisonous to your body cells too. So the first thing that the body does is convert that ammonia byproduct from protein breakdown into what we call urea nitrogen and uric acid. And these now have to be gotten out uh, of the body so the body doesn't become poisonous. And that's the principal constituent of urine. Uh, that's where the term comes from, from the urea nitrogens and the nitrogen waste products from protein waste. Now, on a high protein diet, the problem is that the problems again are so toxic to the body, the body must dilute them with a lot of water to reduce their poisonous effect. It takes seven times as much water to dilute the problems of protein uh, digestive breakdown per calorie than it does of carbohydrates or fat. So if you eat one pound of meat, basically, it takes you seven pounds of water to get rid of it. So that with that much water required, and if you're on a high protein diet, you can lose five pounds of weight in 24 hours. How do you do that? Well, you lose four and a half pounds of water to wash out all those poisonous products and maybe a half a pound of tissue weight. So that's why those in high protein diets have almost an immediate weight loss in 24 hours. I'm sure that's really good for your cells too. Really good. With man. Uh, Stephenson, the explorer, the Arctic explorer that some of you may have remembered some years ago, went on an all-meat diet under the auspices of the American Meat Institute, and his cholesterol went up above 600, and he went up almost to 700. So you certainly can get cholesterol levels up if you're going to eat enough meat and enough cholesterol. No, primates and humans act very much the same. Fortunately, uh, we now know that it's possible to reverse artery closure in humans. We have studies proven by coronary angiogram and other angiogram studies. We have demonstrated reversal in not only the coronary arteries, but that's been demonstrated by Dr. Henry Buckwell, University of Minnesota Medical School, uh, reversal of uh, kidney artery closure demonstrated by Dr. Basta, who at that time was with the University of Iowa Medical School, femoral artery in the legs reversal demonstrated by Dr. David Blankenhorn, also demonstrated by our own studies. We've also demonstrated reversal of iliac artery closure. So there's no question that narrowed or closed arteries can reverse themselves and reopen in humans. The question is how do we get it to apply for the whole general population? Well, studies that have indicated how to lower cholesterol level, of course, are around. And there are certain population differences right in the United States. For example, 
you have the Seventh-day Adventists. Now, they're on three different kinds of diets. They're on the regular American diet. They're on a sort of um, dairy products and vegetarian diet. They're on a sort of a pure vegetarian diet. And the, the Seventh-day Adventists are a good group because they're mixed with the whole population. And we find that in that population, those on the lowest cholesterol intake have the least amount of heart disease and also the least amount of breast cancer. Those on the highest cholesterol intake among the Seventh-day Adventists have the highest amount of artery disease and the highest amount of breast cancer. So it's a disaster for those on the regular American diet, and it's much better for those that have much less cholesterol. So there are population differences there. What don't plants have? Cholesterol. There you go. There you have it. Um, I didn't want this to be a terribly long video. It's actually longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, but there you have it. So if you want your cells running correctly, if you want your immune system running correctly, and if you want your uh, arteries working correctly, then high protein, high fat is not the way to go. Interestingly enough, well, I'll talk about that outside. All right, hopefully that video did you some good. The other thing that I wanted, I'm actually going to hop into another video that I made a, a long time ago, probably July. <laughs> to me, that's a long time ago because I make so many videos. Um, and he talks about the the role of carbohydrates on reproduction. So I'm going to hop into that here. You'll probably lead to some sort of depletion. But if you're eating a well-balanced diet and adding extra uh, calories on top in the form of pure sugar, I don't think you'll be causing um, a problem. In fact, you'll be increasing the metabolic rate. Several studies, um, that study in rats was actually, um, there's there's several citations inside of it discussing older human studies where adding up to a pound of sugar per day, pure sugar, nothing else. I guess they were just mixing it with drinks. Um, it actually led to improvement in glycemic control in people with type 1 diabetes. So these people don't even produce any insulin. So actually improve their glycemic control, allow them to reduce the amount of insulin they were using, uh, which is pretty striking. I mean, like for, for diabetes type 2 also had beneficial effect. Um, actually, it reduced the, the, the level of fatty infiltration of their liver. Most people with type 2 diabetes have fatty liver disease as well. Um, and then now that study showed that basically like the study with the rats uh, confirmed that it, oh, the same thing happens in animals. And recently there was a human study demonstrating that adding a pound of sugar per day uh, resulted in a drastic in improvement of fertility in males. Why do I mention this? Because fertility in both males and females is actually one of the cardinal biomarkers of good health. It's considered an evolutionary luxury. Like if you're starving, fighting off a predator. So as you can see, not only does it run your immune sy system, not only does it open up your arteries, not only does it run your mitochondria, it also runs your sex drive and your ability to multiply so hormones are going to go up with this and everything else is going to raise with this as well so you cannot function the only real essential thing that you nutrient that you can actually eat is carbohydrate um when you eat a whole and like if you're just going to try to live off sugar it's not like just straight white table sugar it's not going to work but when you eat a whole food based diet or a lot of fruit there's going to be all the fat and all the protein that you possibly need in those foods nature isn't retarded we think it is but when you go out into nature the foods that you find are going to be high carbohydrate mostly other than the nuts which are extremely short season and the avocados which is again it's extremely short season and avocados really don't even ripen until they fall off the tree so it's a very very short window that you have with avocado the last thing that I wanted to show you before I close out this video is people who are collapsing in marathons. We've all seen this, right? It's not because they're high. I don't even know if there's actually a term for too low of a fat or protein, but it would be probably like a hypolipidemia or lipidemia, or, you know, or like nitro hypo nitrogen whatever for protein i don't i actually don't even know if that exists but hypoglycemic does exist and i'm going to show you some video of that happen so here we go this person is low in sugar you can see that not low in fat not low in protein low in sugar here's another one probably keto warrior 
Uh oh. We got a keto warrior. Oh. Yep. Oh, there you go. Low glycemic. Oh, they didn't have enough protein. Low protein here. Anyway, you get that point. All right, so we're back. That's it. Hopefully this video did you some good. Hopefully this helped you out. This is uh, Share this video if you think this would do anybody any good. L again, like always, comments, questions down in the section down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video.